Cornwall Light and Power is an independent company and it's owned 100% by renewable energy generation, which in turn is 100% UK and 100% renewable energy focused. So they only generate electricity from either onshore wind projects or in some instances uh, using biofuel. Cornwall Light and Power um, does have a number of key offices in Cornwall, both in Truro and in Helston, but does have offices throughout Britain and indeed seven operating wind farms that are spread throughout Britain from Cornwall all the way up to County Durham. And looking forward, we very much hope to build more projects both in Cornwall but further afield. We've now got planning permission to redevelop the existing Goonhilly wind farm and replace the 14 small wind turbines that were installed about 17 years ago with six much more modern wind turbines. And in so doing, they're going to triple the amount of electricity generated and therefore triple the amount of carbon savings from that project. The current output of the wind farm uh, at rated power is 5.6 megawatts and the new turbines will output something like 12 megawatts. Technically, the new turbines are much better than the existing turbines. Technology has increased tremendously in the last 17 years. The electronics, the controls of the turbines is much better. The shape of the blades is better. The output of the turbines generally is much more sophisticated now than it was 17 years ago. The electricity generated will be roughly equivalent to the whole of the domestic electricity demand on the Lizard Peninsula. That's about 5,000 homes worth of electricity, year in, year out, without any carbon emissions. It's quite extraordinary the amount of savings that are going to come from that. Um, it's been estimated that the uh, emission savings will be equivalent to driving a Ford Focus 25 million kilometres. That's an extraordinary distance. The Green Power Group uh, is going to be set up so it becomes a focal point for people in the community to um, find out about the project, to find out about its development, about its build, and also we will be um, giving information back to the community so they can get involved because there are lots of benefits covering education and uh, environmental benefits that we wish the communities and the local people to be interested and involved in. We're looking to uh, involve people who are, uh, represent special interest groups, local communities, parishes, uh, local schools, because it's very important that schools get um, involved from primary school right through to uh, senior school. Well, the Green Power Group uh, is expected to have regular meetings and uh, the other way that people can keep in touch with the Green Power Group is by uh, the, the specialist website which is www.goonhillygreenpower.co.uk. We also expect the, uh, the group to be able to develop ideas and activities surrounding the project um, in the local area and as I said it will be involving local schools and we'll, we'll be keen to have local ideas come forward so the locals can be actively involved. Cornwall Light and Power engages with an awful lot of the uh, local people whenever we engage and, and look to build a new project and that's no different with the Goon Hilly project. Here we've got a long history um, in the area with the existing project, we've uh, got a good uh, local reputation and we knew a lot of the local communities and local groups that we should be talking to and as a consequence of that the, uh, the project actually went through the planning system very very quickly and obviously with a positive outcome. We uh, anticipate that the balance of plant contractor that's the contract will carry out the civil and engin electrical engineering works, will start on site at the end of March or the beginning of April this year. And we'll work continuously till the turbines are up, energised and exporting electricity, which should be in September. Because of the previous use of this site, which in the First World War was used as a, um, an airship station, um, we have had to do carry out some um, unexploded ordnance surveys of the whole of the working area. When the contractor who was laying the grid, the cable for the grid connection uh, was on site, he did in fact find at the very perimeter of the site an object which turned out to be a First World War bomb. We immediately brought in uh, some uh, specialist surveyors who identified what it was and the uh, bomb squad came down from Plymouth and disposed of the uh, bomb by blowing it up. This here is a piece of the North Cone of a First World War 250 pound high explosive bomb, which was, was presumably dropped from one of the airships uh, into the soft ground around the, around the airship station. And this is what was found by the, but it was a complete bomb in, at that time, uh, by the uh, trenching excavator. And uh, this was the remains after the local bomb disposal unit had had a controlled explosive. 
There was this and a few other fragments remaining. We subsequently brought in uh, experts to survey the whole of the working area of the wind farm. Everywhere where the, there's going to be a turbine, a trench, a road, hard standing, all these places uh, uh, where the contractor's compound will be has all been swept and made sure that it's clear of any other unexploded ordnance. When the project gets built, uh, not only will it be a fantastic form of generation, it will have an impact on the local economy, it will have uh, very good positive benefits for the local environment. We also expect to have a visitor centre on site and there's every chance that we'll be having a, a nature trail around the site. So there'll be lots of interest for people. The community can benefit in a number of different ways.